universities, uh, they all think that's a that's a big deal. Um, obviously, I never played basketball for something like that to happen. Uh, uh, in many ways, I wish my name hadn't gotten associated with it because I think it creates problems for myself, more importantly, the NBA, and I, I don't think that was ever their intention. Well, hey, listen, put me on the shorts if you got a problem, if you can't handle it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, 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 I could use a little pop and pub. Listen, it's a great <laughs> honor, and you truly were one of the greats. And, yeah, you know, Jerry, I thought about this the other day. I was kind of just flipping through the channels, watching the kids, and I went over from the Golf Channel down to NBA TV. And I don't, I don't remember what game it was, but it was certainly the 1963 NBA Finals, uh, and it was uh, the Celtics were playing. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm watching, and you were playing, and I'm watching the uh, the pace of the game. And I, I know that we hear now, eh, there's not a ton of defense. Ah, the league's changed. So I got to tell you, as somebody who was an avid NBA follower, always has been, always will be, I thought the pace of that game would have been a little slower. I got to tell you, it looked a lot more free-flowing than I thought it would have been. Is there some revisionist history going on the way the NBA used to be compared to the way it is now? Well, actually, the team scored as much or more than. The problem was that the game was very, very physical, a lot of grabbing and holding, which in, which inhibited the speed of the game, to be uh, to be candid with you. But the, uh, but the things that have really changed today, uh, at that point in time, those games, the athletes then – uh, there was no money involved like there is today. We get a different kind of athlete. Uh, we get kids that start at a very early age. They had all the amenities to learn and get better. But I think the really big difference is are the coaches. The coaches have been, uh, at that point in time, you were an offensive player and a defensive player, and it was up to you to guard the guy that you were guarding. You weren't supposed to have, have any scheme at all. Uh, it was a game that was based a lot more on uh, passing than dribbling. Um, it was uh, it just wasn't as well coached then, and mm -hmm. the coach, the coaches, I think, have changed the game more than the game has changed itself. And also, our modern day athletes are absolutely incredible and wonderful to watch. Some of the things they do, uh, if you watch football, if you watch uh, baseball, all the players, we didn't, we never touched the weight. It was not something we do, we we would ever do. Uh, most of the guys who played, they, they had to work in the offseason to support their families. Yeah. And so uh, the advent, the professionalism of the league has, has gone so much further in the coaching. And they identify kids very early. And these kids are in programs where they're playing basketball all year long. So we get a, a better player. We certainly get a more athletic player. And we get players that are better, better coached. Uh, to, to me, when I look back, I wished I had the ability to – uh, learn how to lift weights because it was something that would have helped me for sure. And also uh, even a diet uh, mm, that yeah. all, all teams ascribe to, and particularly the players that play the game at a high level. Jerry West with us here on Tiki and Tierney, Warriors executive. Nice uh, nice summation of the way the game's changed. But Jerry, of course, here on Tiki and Tierney. You know, Jerry, you in, in that executive role, you're around the team a lot. And last time I saw you uh, was at that game around the Super Bowl down in the tunnel, and it was chaos. I mean, there's so many stars against that Oklahoma City squad. Now, you guys have obviously added now KD. What's the intensity of the, I don't know, the star power like in Golden State right now as you guys get ready to start camp? Well, you know, I've never seen uh, a collection of four players that I think are four of the top 20 players. I've never seen a team have that. Um, we've got a bunch of great guys. Everyone says, well, there's only one basketball. Trust me, these guys are team players. Uh, I don't think that will be a problem. I think the biggest adjustment they're going to have to make, who are they going to play together and how many minutes are they going to play? We have seven players that I would not trade for any seven players in the league collectively. Uh, that play the game at a very high level. Many of them are way too unselfish. And we have passers, we have rebounders, we have competitors. Uh, we are really well coached. And we have a lot of young kids. This is a very young team. Uh, the oldest of those four players I'm talking about, Curry, Durant, Green, and Thompson, the oldest one is Steph Curry, and he's 28 years old. And he's just coming off the back-to-back -back, uh, most valuable uh, uh, player season. And to add a player like Kevin Durant, who's 
if he's not the best player, he's the second best player in all of basketball. You don't see that happening very often, and only free agency would allow that to happen today. Yeah, you know, you talked about the coaching and the better coaching that's happening. You see that with Steve Kerr uh, with your squad, and, and, and it seems like it would be hard to manage all those different personalities, but is the philosophy of your front office to not bring the, you know, I'll put it in quotes, the problem children there who can't be team players? Well, I think once you get a team, and a really good team, the idea is to build around and get players that will support their ability. Uh, you just certainly don't want players that are out there for, uh, for trying to make a name for themselves. Our players don't want to do this. And I said it last year, and I'll say it again. I have never been around a more cohesive group of players that are unselfish. They have one goal in mind, and that's to win. Uh, if you're... If you were around these people, you'd be shocked at how nice they are and how courteous they are. Uh, how courteous they are. Yep. Um, uh, people that uh, are just exceptional. Jerry, the last thing I'm trying to do is, is you know, paint a, a potentially negative image because it's, I mean, it's really, really hard to do that with the talent. But as you said, the selfless talent. I mean, it's, it is a collection of good young men. I'm with you. I totally agree. I've met all of them and I've spoke to all of them. And I think you're right. But I just want to throw this out there. Is there a, a maybe in the deepest recesses of your minds as an organization, just say that, you know, there is mm, some, you know, fighting over shots, uh, and at some point that that, that just comes and becomes a storyline? Well, not really. Well, no, but, 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 not I, I, really. I, okay, okay, fair. We don't, have that, we don't have those kind of players in our team. I know but, you don't. But, uh, you know, the other reason, obviously, I'm here today is talking about um, – uh, a condition I have. I have AFib, and obviously, uh, you know, it's a very, very dangerous d disease for strokes. I've been dealing with it for for years, and uh, I've now partnered with Janssen Corporation to be kind of a spokesman for them. I'm taking a new uh, modern-day drug called Xeralto, uh which has a lot of positive things for me. I stopped taking uh, Warfarin years uh, a year ago, and uh, it's it's how I managed my life, and I couldn't enjoy this basketball team, nor would I have an opportunity to enjoy it, uh, enjoy it and appreciate it unless I had good health. Yep. And that's what I'm really worried about today, and that's what I'm here to talk about. And people want to know my life story with AFib, they can go on myafibchoice.com. It's my own personal story. And uh, I want to be healthy so I can watch this team progress and hopefully win another NBA championship. And no doubt. You know, um... What I was going to say before, Jerry, about uh, about Steph, and again, I, I don't think it will be an issue. I, I really don't. I'm I'm agreeing with you, but he's uh, he's staring at free agency. Uh, is there is there a th will you guys get something done before the season? I mean, do you think Steph Curry actually hits the open mark? Well, market? you know, I, I, listen. Every player has a right to do that. Uh, you know, just as Kevin Durant had a right to do it, he got criticized for it, which is to me all wrong. Sometimes players, I wish I had a choice in my life. Uh, to be able to be a, been a free agent because I did not like him one owner we had out there. I would have left. Wow. I would have left. There's no question I would have left because he had not told me the truth. And uh, you can tell me no, but you can't tell me uh, tr the, the, uh, you have to tell me the truth. And uh, Steph has that right to do that. Uh, we'll take our chances. I think he loves uh, the Bay Area out there. He's developed a lifestyle out there. He's beloved out there. Yeah. We have two icons in the sports business out there. Uh, who are still around, Joe Montana and also Willie Mays. And the other night, Kevin Durant was visiting with Will Willie Mays, and Willie Mays was showing him how to throw the first pitch to a giant game. And uh, Kevin's going to – he's huge already. <laughs> Out there he's going to have a bigger following. But, again, it's important to me to be able to watch one of my favorite players. I, I have two or three of them. And Kevin Durant's right up at the top of the list with that. But it's important for me to be healthy so I can watch it. And that's why I'm yeah, here. Yeah, we've got to keep you healthy, Jerry. Uh, well, that's exactly why I'm here, <clears throat> to talk about my choices and uh, what I need to do to protect myself so I can enjoy this team. And, again, if people want to, uh, to look at my life and uh, the issue I deal with in AFib, uh, they can go to my, the website, my AFib. A choice dot com. I've partnered with Jansen and uh, want everyone to be aware of this because it is dangerous, and there's so many people out there. And particularly once you get to your 50s and 60s, you have to protect yourself. Yeah, you know, Jerry, it's interesting too because you see a lot of basketball players. I think we heard Phil Jackson talking about this uh, maybe a year ago or so because because of how your bodies are built and you, the weight you put on, you lose weight. 
it's it's dangerous on your heart sometimes to be as big as you guys are. Well, I, it's a truth. And uh, last year we had two players uh, who died of heart disease that are seven feet tall, Daryl uh, Daryl Dawkins, and also Moses Malone. They mm-hmm. happened to play together in Philadelphia, and it was a shock to me because I'm 78 years old. And the most important thing that I do in my life today is watch my lifestyle. I love, still love to work out. I like to get on the treadmill. I like to lift weights. I actually have someone come to my house to stretch me. And uh, <laughs> nice. this is another pre- preventative thing for me. It uh, makes me feel good. I feel strong. And I need to protect myself if I'm going to enjoy what I'm enjoying today, being involved with the Warriors, and more importantly, to uh, be concerned about my health and, and again, uh, Zeralto, I've made a choice. It's an easier drug for me to deal with as compared to, to Warfin. And um, uh, I, I want to enjoy this team, and I can't enjoy it if I have a stroke. And 